My guest on the show today is Chrissy Nordhoff, and she is one of my mentors. She has poured into my life, and I cannot wait for you to hear her story today on the Rustic Songbird podcast. Chrissy, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm honored to be here. Well, it's a dream come true. I have talked about you on my show. I've interviewed Brave Worship Girls on this show, and they have talked about how much you've impacted their life as well. So I just wanted to thank you right off the bat for pouring into other people, especially other songwriters who are uh, maybe younger or just getting started or wanting more experience. You have really um, found a great community or built a great community of songwriters, especially women that are worship leaders, writing worship music, and there's really nothing else like it out there. And so you're doing something new and it's really needed. So thank you for all that you do to pour into other songwriters. Thank you. Thank you, Lydia. That's so kind. I would love to talk a little bit about your story and introduce you to our listeners. And today we're going to talk about how to find the right songwriting mentor and what that looks like to be mentored by somebody and just a balance of finding someone to pour into and then pour into someone else. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we're going to go through a lot of that today about mentorship and talk about what you're doing uh, with Brave Worship. And so just real quickly, can you introduce yourself about how you got started in songwriting and what that journey was like? Yes, absolutely. So um, I grew up in Michigan in the middle of nowhere on a farm. And um, we didn't have a TV, honestly, most of the time growing up. So we had to come up with our own ways of entertaining ourselves, and we did. So we had, um, we didn't have a lot, but we did have land. We lived on my grandfather's farm, and so we had about 100 acres to explore and play. And I think that is what gave me room to start thinking creatively. Um, but my my grandmother, um, she taught me my first few things on piano and she um I was very intrigued by watching her play she could play by ear and she was amazing um she'd play hymns she'd play like ragtime and she had a little poodle that would sit on her piano while she played and um I fell in love with music um because of her and she passed away when I was five and I didn't realize it until many years later but that was the age that I started writing songs and so in some ways, I feel like there was a, a musical torch passed to me um, at that age. And I didn't know it until much later. But um, I used to stand on our metal swing set and sing into the end of it because it echoed like a microphone. And that's where I started writing songs um, was on that farm. And over time, you know, I didn't know what I was doing. My parents didn't know what I was doing. I didn't really have, um, you know, I wasn't part of this huge musical family or anything really um so nobody really knew what to do with me but they got me in lessons and I started piano and voice and um and they traveled with me through high school I'd go sing at different churches pretty much every week and um then I was in a youth for Christ choir I got to college I had to declare a major and I decided to go with music business it was a newer newer um major at that point and I minored in vocal performance I had one song or one class rather while I was there that really changed everything for me. And that was songwriting 101 and Gloria Gaither taught that class. And um, I just remember leaving pretty much every class in tears because of how moved I was by what she spoke or what she taught or by um, what she revealed from God's heart. It just, it really shook me. And I didn't know how much until much later, but um after college I moved to Nashville really to pursue the artist thing and um I was almost I almost signed a record deal which it took six months to negotiate it fell through at the end and I was like I just don't know if I want this you know it really made me think about my future and um I had seen the tour schedules I knew I'd be gone for two to three months at a time but I also knew I wanted to have kids and literally, I remember thinking, I want my kids to be able to play soccer, you know, do all the things that kids do. So um, I had two little boys during that time. We were traveling. I actually went through an illness. Um, and I just felt a change of heart this one day and told my husband. And I said, I don't think I want to travel anymore. 
I just feel a shift of season. And I found out the next week that I was pregnant with my third. Wow. And so during that pregnancy, I wrote a song called Your Great Name, which um, was the first song that I didn't sing that I wrote. And um, the Lord showed me really through that song that he could still use my heart and, um, and I could stay home with my babies like I wanted to. And so for some reason, that was the first time I had this realization that, oh my gosh, I'm a songwriter. That's who I am. Um, it took me a while to get there because just because of expectations of other people or expectations I put on myself. Um, but ultimately I came to that place and I never signed a publishing deal until I was here in Nashville for 19 years. Um, so I worked independently that whole time. And, um, and my baby, my third one was in kindergarten when I signed that publishing deal. So, um, you know, it certainly wasn't a short journey to that place of being a professional songwriter, um, but it was the right timing for me. And, um, and yeah, so that's sort of how I got started. Yeah, you've had quite the journey of just the Lord leading you to Nashville and then all the time and the work you've put in of writing with different people and songs being used for different things mm -hmm. or other projects. You've had uh, songs that are taken by artists and that have gone to radio you've had songs sung in churches and just really being used all over the world and so that's an amazing thing to be part of mm. knowing that you're creating things that are going to impact the church worldwide and that are going to really go further than it probably would as if you were the artist you know being the songwriter and so uh, that's really exciting that you got to that point where you said, this is my calling. This is it. I'm a songwriter. I don't have to be the songwriter and the artist. Mm -hmm. But at that point, when you had that clarity, um, is that when you started praying for a mentor or somebody that's gone before you? Or has that been something that you were praying for for a long time? Um, that was something I began praying right when I moved to Nashville. So, um, yeah, we've been here now 25 years. So I prayed that prayer for about 15 years and um, continued to the ask, ask the Lord for a female that had gone before me and that knew how to balance ministry and family and industry because I it was a lot to figure out and it was oh. and it was changing a lot through that time as well. Um, but honestly, there was no one um, that whole time. But I prayed that and year 15, the Lord said to me, um, be what you need. And um, that's when I started sort of gathering girls that were writers um, in my living room. And we started a ministry called Girls Write Out, which you've been a part of for a long time, Lydia. Yes, I love it. Um, and so that's kind of how the mentoring piece started. And that was 10 years ago. And just gathered for community and building one another up and for encouragement um, in a place where not only were females the definite minority um, as far as the writing world is concerned, but just in general, there's so much competition in the industry. And, um, and I just got tired of it and I felt like there could be another way um, and that we could be actually building greater things for the kingdom if we work together and not against one another even within the Christian music industry, which sounds crazy to say, but it's the truth. Um, and so that sort of is where things began. And um, about three years ago, my sister joined me. She moved to town from Arizona and um, had been leading worship for all that time while I'd been writing. And so um, she came in and, and we sort of um, then birthed this ministry called Brave Worship. And it's specifically geared toward female worship leaders and songwriters. Um, so that was kind of the next thing that we saw the need for. And out of that, um, we saw a need for a course, which was birthed last year. Um, and then out of that, I saw a need for a book. So I actually just finished writing a book this summer. Oh, that's so exciting. It's so cool to see the journey of how the Lord takes you from where you are and teaches you different things. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times it takes years for something to come to fruition. And you were talking about 
you know, praying for a long time mm-hmm. to find that mentor. And then when you actually got that clarity on, oh, the Lord wants me to be a mentor now that I have these years of experience and I know that there's a need for this. And then you were able to create something that would help others in the same situation. And so I do feel like there's such a need for that. And Brave Worship has been an amazing resource. And like you said, it's not about competition. It's about building community and building each other up. And I think there needs to be more of that in the world today. Hmm. I love that you have uh, events for songwriters to network and meet each other and collaborate. I have met some awesome co-writers through Brave Worship and have really enjoyed the events that I've gone to and been a part of. Um, I love that it's spiritually grounded and that whenever we go there, it's like, you know, people are really just willing to pray over you and to talk about you. They want it. They want to know how you're actually doing. And I, I love that too. It's not just a industry networking thing. It's really just doing life together mm-hmm. and using that for ministry. Um, so tell me a little bit about how the songwriting course came to be because you have been mentoring people like you said in group settings and events for a while so uh, where was the shift when you realized you could take it to more people using the course yeah well um brave went to scotland in 2017 and um it was just you know we did some co-writing over there but when we got home there was just this talk amongst the group of um, we really want to learn more specifically about writing songs, like how can we learn more? Um, and we, I just started exploring and praying. And so what I decided to do was, um, just take a small group. Um, I felt like, you know, at that time the Lord was saying only take a small number. Um, and we did. And we, we started teaching, like I would do a week at a time. I would teach a week um, and then they would work on homework for the week. And then I'd write and then I'd teach and then they would work on homework. And we did that until it felt like it was finished. And it took about eight weeks. And um, during that time, you know, I spent a lot of time in the mornings with the Lord journaling and he would reveal to me each piece as I needed it. He didn't give me the whole picture. Um, like you're saying before, he literally gave me one piece at a time for that course. And, um, I had to trust him for it cause it was, I didn't know exactly what it was going to look like. Um, but we went through, um, the eight weeks and I got done and Eric said, my husband, Chrissy, we need to put this online. Like there are more people that could benefit from this. Um, And so we decided to, I wrote it all out um, and sort of, that was, that was another big project preparing for those videos. And um, we recorded everything here in in my home studio. And then um, my husband helped me put it up on Teachable. And I think so far we've had about 180 people go through the course, um, which is crazy. And when we started it, yeah, it's unreal. When we started it, Basically, it was sort of, you know, you can go through on your own at your own pace. But what we realized um, after a little while in was that people actually need that community aspect of this course to keep them motivated and accountability, but just also like the beauty. There was something missing. And so um, starting last fall, uh, we decided to break these mint, these uh mentees, I guess, these students, Mm -hmm. groups, um, and have them be mentored by someone. And so at this point, we've got four, um, actually, right now we have three, um, go three groups going through the course, but they each have a mentor. And then I'm mentoring the mentors. So um, it turned into sort of something a little bit different than what we originally thought. Yeah, so if people are interested in taking the course, it's a worship songwriting mentorship course. And like you said, it's pushed out to take eight weeks. Um, people can go at their own pace. That's the beauty of online courses. I love online courses yeah. um, because you can pretty much learn anything. And so whatever you're interested in, uh, you can take it at your own pace, wherever you live, just from your computer. 
and for this worship songwriting, um, can you talk a little bit about the subjects that you go over in the course? Yeah, so um, we each session is broken down into parts. So at first we worship together. That's the praise part of things. Um, and you may learn some new songs, some songs you haven't heard before, but we introduce them to you there. Um, and those will continue to change. And then we go into um, the personal piece, which is always heart oriented. And, um, you know, I feel like way more than 50% of um, writing worship has to do with your heart. And if your heart is not in the right place, you're not going to be hearing what the Lord has for you to hear. Um, and you're not going to be writing the songs you're meant to write. And so we spent a lot of time focused on um, things related to the heart and getting your heart in the right place. And then the third piece that we do is called practical. And in the practical side of things, we give hands-on hands -on skill. So things that um, will practically help you in the writing room. We give tools, we talk about um, some song mapping, lots of different things that relate to um, writing practically. And then um, we also, finally, we put things into practice. So you take what you've learned during that session and you, um, you work on it on your own or in the group, depending on what is asked of you that week. So there's, we talk about your songwriter personalities. We talk about co-writing extensively. Um, we assign co-writing um lots of different things um so that's kind of tip of the iceberg but there's a lot packed in um to those courses yeah that's so good and i love that you start out with the heart of it and getting your heart right and then from that place the lord can flow these new songs through you and so having that community aspect but also like the practicality of this is how a song is usually structured and these are the things you can use to make it a better song like just crafting it to be the best that it can be um you mentioned the songwriter personalities which is something that uh that you've discovered over the time of co-writing with different people and how they gel together in co-writes and um how different people have different gifts as a songwriter so i know you go over those in the course but could you uh, talk about the songwriter personality test that you made so people know kind of what those personalities are. Yeah, absolutely. So I think it's really helpful, um, especially if you're starting out, just getting to um, understand co-writing a little bit or just haven't done it before even, just to understand the strengths of um, how God made you and who you are when you walk into a room. I think one thing that's really important to remember is you don't have to carry in strengths in every single area as a co-writer. Um, you just need to know what your strength is. And then if you look for people that have the opposite strengths and pull them into the room with you, it actually gives you the greatest um, environment to write a strong song. Um, and so you realize that that's what community looks like when we're talking about um, music and in, in the body of Christ, it looks like that. It's unity. Um, it's different parts operating together to create the whole. And so um, there are seven different songwriter personalities. They're in kind of three categories. So um, there's a content uh, writer, which is in the lyrics category. And in the center, we've got what we call crafters. So those are concept writers that sort of see the big picture. Um, we have structure writers that love all the details, making sure everything is shored up. And then we have hearing prophetic writers in that category. So those are people that are more worried about listening to the voice of God than hearing a lyric or a melody. They're sort of in the center, they're crafters. Um, and then on the far other side of our writing group, we've got the music people. So those are the melody writers, the chords arranging writers and the producer track writers. And those are all sort of um, self-explanatory. Um, and then, you know, those crafters, usually if you look at se second giftings and you can, if you take the extended test, find out exactly what order yours are all in. Um, it'll tell you if you lean towards lyrics or music, usually you lean one way or the other. It can go either way. Um, but ultimately you want to write with people that are in 
um, an opposite category of you. At least one, and a lot of times I like writing with two. So if you're a lyricist, write with a crafter and a music person. Or if you're a crafter, you want to write with a lyrics and a music. And same thing if you're a music person, look for a craft or a content lyric writer. Oh, that's so good. And I love that you mentioned that you can have a secondary gift as well, because sometimes your secondary gifts might show up in a right depending on what the strengths are of the other person so it's not like there are seven and you can only be one but different things will be stronger for you than for somebody else and that's how you can complement each other and if you do have more of the musical side and someone else has more of the lyrical side then you'll fit together and complement each other's gifts and just come out with better songs because of that so I love that. I took your test and I'm a content writer, which totally makes sense for me because I'm all about the message, what the song means and yeah. like the overall mission of what do we want this song to be about and what do we want it to do? Like very purposeful. And so when I took the test, I just laughed. I said, yes, that's me. Like it's so right on. And I love this. Okay. And uh, so it's always fun to learn about yourself too. And then you kind of understand, oh, this is why... I tick this certain way, you know, and then it's like, oh, I'm not weird. This is just how I'm wired, you yeah. know, and so everybody is different. I love that. So could you share with us how people can take that songwriter personality test? Yes. Um, you can go to my website. It's chrissynordoff.com, K-R-I-S-S-Y-N-O-R-D-H-O-F-F.com slash test. And it's free. Anybody can use that as a resource. That's awesome. And your website has information for your worship songwriting course. So yes. if our listeners are interested in taking that, it's an in-depth eight week course uh, with all of the things that we were talking about earlier and just really helpful for anyone wanting to take their songwriting to a deeper level, especially in Christian music and in worship songwriting. You go over a lot about uh, the purpose of it and also the practicality and the tools that they need to take their inspiration and really craft it into a song. So we have songwriters listening that really want to take their music to the next level. So what encouragement would you give people that are, um, that are out there that are wanting to get better at it, but just looking for the next step? Yeah, I would say for sure, by far, the number one most important thing is to be connected to the creator. Um, I used to believe at one time, you know, that I had to come up with new creative ideas and I put a lot of pressure on myself to do that and to be clever and um, come up with fresh things. And what I realized, well, I heard a story actually, and it changed everything for me, but the story I heard was um, there was a songwriter who had a near death experience, went to heaven. And um, when he got to heaven, he spoke to an angel and heard one of his songs playing and said to the angel, you're singing one of my songs. And the angel said back to him, no, we let you hear one of our songs. And, um, and so he came back and shared that story. Mm -hmm. Um, and that was a true story, but anyways, it just really changed everything for me from me having to create to actually putting myself in a different category of me needing to listen and um and really if you're wanting to go further in your, your creativity and in your music you cannot do that without plugging in to the creator so making sure that you're reading your bible making sure that you are um journaling that's another thing i talk about a lot making sure um that you are singing psalms those three things i would recommend doing in the mornings and um if you're just used to plugging in and um, spending time with the Lord in the mornings, when you walk in the writing room, it'll be no different. You won't feel a new pressure. It'll be the same, um, you know, place. It's a reflex that builds over time, but it takes the practice of daily discipline in order to get to that place. Um, so that's the number one thing I would recommend. Don't that's put awesome. pressure on yourself. Just plug into the creator. And you'll be able to create beyond what you could have ever expected. I love that. I'm glad you shared that story too of, uh, you know, hearing what 
the angels are singing because mm -hmm. the Lord gives us those ideas and he is infinitely creative. So we don't have to muster up anything. We don't have to work it up. We just have to listen. Exactly. And I, I do believe that he downloads those song ideas to us. It, sometimes it comes in a rush and it's just like the whole song as fast as you can write it down. And yeah. sometimes it comes out of nowhere and you're like, wait, is that already a song or is that a new song? You know, I think that's a struggle for a lot of writers. Like, did I just make that up? <laughs> is that already written? So um, I'm really glad you shared some of your story today and uh, just the importance of uh, finding that mentorship, finding that community to really grow as a writer because you can only do so much by yourself. I mean, talent can only take you so far. You need that structure and really putting in the time and the work to get better at it. And you've put in so much time into pouring into others. So uh, mm -hmm. I can tell that, I mean, Brave Worship is only a few years old and it's already done so much uh, for the writers in the Nashville area. And it's going to impact people for a long time to come as well. So I can't wait to see the other songs that come out of that and you're just multiplying what the Lord has shown you. And so that's a beautiful gift. Thank you for your ministry. I wanted to let everybody know about braveworship.com. They can go to braveworship.com for the events that you're talking about, your annual conference. Um, you had a trip to Scotland and now this year going to Ireland. So that's mm -hmm. super exciting. Um, and then you also have, um, the podcast, Brave Worship Podcast. So people are listening to this podcast, just head over to Brave Worship Podcast and you can hear the episodes that Chrissy's been working on. Um, you've interviewed some people about their songwriting personalities. Mm -hmm. So I think that's really interesting to understand the different ways that it can show up depending on the personality. So yeah. go listen to the Brave Worship Podcast. Do you have any other words of encouragement before we wrap up? Um, one thing I would just add is that we've started doing brave coffees, um, in other parts of the country. So if you're in another part of the country, just check and see if we're in your area because we may be. Awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That community is super important and plugging in to be around other songwriters that can lift you up and, um, just pour into each other is so huge. And then finally, I would just say persistence is the difference. That's what makes the difference. So if you are, um, you know, writing and, and you're having a hard time, I just encourage you to keep pushing through and not give up because those are the, those are the writers that rise to the top. It's the ones that didn't give up because lots of us, um, you know, as writers face rejection over and over, that's just comes with the territory. But, um, but if you can press on and remember what God's called you to do and not worry about um, anything else and keep going. Persistence will make a big difference for you. Awesome. Thank you, Christy. And thanks for your time being on the show today. Absolutely. Thank you. God bless you Lydia, for all you're doing. Real quick, I wanted to let you know that if you're a songwriter or musician and you're ready to put your music out there, I've got a whole list of resources to help you take that next step to get your music out into the world. I want to invite you to check out rusticsongbird.com resources for links to how I distribute my music online, for community and support, for supplies and recording equipment, all kinds of things. You can find links to resources to help you take that next step. Go to rusticsongbird.com slash resources. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.